Like I've said in numerous videos, we are seeing the encroachment, basically the end stage of socialism. And of course, this is not just within the United States of America, but it's also taking place in much of Europe. This is an article from The Hedge talking about Berlin to vote on confiscating rental properties from corporations. And it's basically this woman over here is basically an activist and she has been pushing for the local governments to basically, this is, this is Germany is actively moving toward seizing rental properties from corporate landlords to provide housing, to provide cheap or free housing to the masses. And it is, and it has uh, Lorena Jonas to thank for this sharp turn to the left. And it says that she's an individual who has basically been pushing this for quite some time. She's been pushing for free housing or for the government to take over um, many of these either hedge funds, large businesses that have been bought, have been buying up real estate and using that real estate in what is referred to as a real estate investment trust, which they go out, of course, and they rent it, they cash flow it. And then the people who sponsor uh, are basically put up money for the business to go out and buy these rental properties. And then they get paid a dividend. And of course, many people don't like that, especially if they're not well paid or not, or do not, I should say, are not skilled enough to go out and receive good payment for their work. Many of these individuals might not necessarily, they might be unskilled, work low manually, manual wage jobs. And of course they want what is referred to often as a living wage and they just unfortunately can't get it. Now this of course is not just being seen in places like in Berlin. We've also seen that here within the United States with the cancel, cancel rent movement that has been going on for the better part of 2020. There have been numerous pushes for um, price, you know, manipulation, manipulation of the market in terms of the housing market. And this has gone on from city to city to city to city to city, etc. Um, that you can see, you can just go into uh, into Twitter and type in cancel rent, and you will see from city to city, state after state with individuals that are basically calling for socialism, right? So this has been going on for quite some time. This is very similar to um, giving people unemployment. You know, they say, well, we, we know, we're not working. You need to pay us. The same thing happened in Germany. The same thing happened across the entire EU. The same, a very similar thing happened in places like, for example, in Canada. And so what happens is over time is that the people just become accustomed to all of these Free things, social security. Uh, you look at Medicare, Medicaid, uh, free. You know, you need to give us free tuition. You need to um, give us a living wage. We need protection for X, Y, and Z from the government. You need to give us money. You need to cancel our student, our student loans, etc. And eventually, the people get used to it. it. Doesn't take long for humans to adjust to the concept of shoot, I can vote for free stuff. And this is not this is something that is not just in America. It's not something that is just in Europe. It happens in any country. You look at, for example, Greece, which we will go into. Right. And so what happens is that politicians get pushed into a corner. Right. This was August 4th. Joe Biden's foolish surrender to the hard left Dems seeking to cancel rent. And so when people find a politician or they view a politician, for example, that is corrupt, well, then they will vote and say, well, this person is corrupt. They're mismanaging funds. We want this person out of office, right? But what do you do when it's the people? What do you do when the people are corrupt? What do you do when it's the people who want to vote for more corruption? As a politician, you're primarily focused on being reelected. And so what they do is they give the people what they want and when they give the people what they want and the people become unhappy they turn around and blame the politicians they don't take responsibility and say look we've crashed our economy we've killed uh, our production we need to we need to get back to work we need to be more productive a very similar thing happened in greece and it says greece rejects the european austerity this is an article from 2015 and it says, Greek voters rejected European austerity. It could lead to Athens being left out of the Eurozone. This is from July 5th, 2015. 
right? So again, same thing, social programs, the expansion of social programs, basically robbing those who produce and giving it to those who consume. It says ignoring the demands of their European partners and heeding the call of their prime minister, Alex uh, Tespiris. It says Greek voters rejected austerity demands Sunday, a vote that could bring the nation out of the Eurozone and could signal the beginning of the end of modern Europe. It says early returns show 61% of voters said no to the question of asking whether they would accept spending cuts, right? So this is the problem. You guys, you have too many social programs and you're not productive enough to keep up with the social programs that you're asking us to pay for. And so when they say you either need to be more productive or you need to cut spending, what do you think the people are going to vote for? The people are going to vote no. They're going to say you're going to give me my free stuff and you're going to like it. And it goes on to say, it says, uh, as a necessary, it says whether they would accept spending cuts, it says are necessary to continue a five-year, $270 billion bailout package. So they were already bailed out. They, their country was bankrupt because of refusing to spend cuts. And so Europe said, okay, we're going to come up with a bailout for the country, but you need to cut spending. And what did the Greek people say? They said no. They said, no, we're not going to cut spending. You're going to keep on bailing us out. You're going to keep on giving us free money. And this just doesn't work. This just doesn't work over the long run. And so it goes on to say, it says, last week, Greek missed a $1.7 billion payout payment to the International Monetary Fund. This is the IMF, the European Central Bank. The European Commission had extended to Greece a financial lifeline as it teeters on the precipice of bankruptcy. Athens is now in default to the IMF and owes the European Central Bank a payment of 6.7 billion euros in two weeks. The no vote, imagine this, the no vote gives uh, Despiris, who is the prime minister of Greece, it says his desired result, he believes it bolsters his negotiating position with European leaders. Imagine the fucking audacity of the of the Greek prime minister saying, well, my people say that you need to keep on giving us free shit. And imagine thinking that you have leverage in this position. And you know what Europe said? Europe said either you cut spending or you fucking starve. They cut spending. Goes on to say, it says uh, he believes it bolsters his negotiating position with the European leaders. But in the lead up to the Greek referendum, it appears as if Europe was readying for the possibility of Greece leaving the economic union. It joined in 2001. They said, get the fuck out. So you, if you ain't going to follow the rules, well, then there is the door. Good luck. It says German Chancellor Angela Merkel has acknowledged that allowing Greece to adopt the euro was stake they're fucking socialists and so you thought that you were bringing in all these millions of people and it's like hey we're gonna have a group they're gonna be productive you were wrong because the people that you brought in were socialists and when people realize that they can vote for free shit they will and it doesn't stop this is the same thing that is happening here in america with many people who are working from home and this is uh but Jamie Dimon insists his workers return to the office. And it says, here's why that's a bit rich. It says the uh, JP Morgan is his Jamie Dimon, who is basically the chief executive of JP Morgan. It says he has sent employees a letter. It says in a memo, he basically said, get back to work. It says this week, the company said that the company was mandatory. The company said it is now mandatory for all employees to disclose their vaccination status. Why? Because the normies will lose their mind if they find out you've got unvaxxed with the vax. We're all mingling together. We're all going to get sick, right? So they say, fine. Y'all need to come back to work. Everybody needs to take it. So we, they don't want to hear this shit about catching a cough. Because now everybody took it and now we are going to move forward. This is what happened. Is that you get these socialists, those normies, and they just run with it. 
you got them all hyped up. You created this monster. Now you don't know how to put this monster back to bed because they needed it to get Orange Man Dad out of office, but then now they've painted themselves into a corner. And so now this is what you're seeing. The whole, we're not going to take it versus you need to take it. The reason that we're still have in, the, in the midst of this is because of the people who don't want to take it, right? We drank the Kool-Aid, but we're still in testing positive for the Kool-Aid. And all the people who didn't take the Kool-Aid are now laughing at the people who took the Kool-Aid and seeing, saying, we ain't taking that shit. And so what do the leaders are going to do? And now all these people are saying, we're just going to quit. <laughs> we're just going to quit our jobs. And this is the state of the country. It says Americans, right? It says Jamie Dimon, some Americans don't feel like going back to work. And that's the reality. They're comfortable at home. I can wake up, roll out of bed. I'm in my PJs. I'm getting 150K a year. I'm getting 115K a year from one of these big companies. And you're telling me to come back to work? No way, man. I'm living a good life over here. I don't have to do no bosses. I don't have to get all dressed up. I don't have to shower. I don't do none of that shit, right? This is what happens when you employ socialists. Uh, the same article over here. And then we're, this is a very good article talking about uh, the fall of the u.s production it's a very long article for those who want to read it it's very interesting it goes into full detail about why the u.s has been losing productivity for better part of a couple of decades for those who are interested i'm going to close out on this article right here this is coming from the new york post and it says google rolls out pay calculator explaining work from home salary cuts as of august 10th as Google has rolled out a new internal calculator to explain potential pay cuts to employees who choose to work remotely. And the early results suggest it will penalize its suburban staffers. This is screenshots obtained by Reuters show that the Google employees who previously commuted an hour to Manhattan, which has seen its economy devastated by what Cuomo and the left chose to do by shutting everything down. And of course, many of these employee, many of these employees who had office space, who had employees who came to work, they were like, oh, maybe we don't really need all of this office space. Maybe we don't really need all of these people. Some of these people were just kind of dead weight that we were just keeping around. And so they were cutting them loose or they were like, you know, I don't, I don't need this office space. Let's let this lease expire. And so, of course, the city is probably trying to make a deal with many of these big companies. And they're like, look, either we're going to. You're not going to be able to do business here. You know, they're going to try to put the squeeze on them. Maybe the federal government is going to do something to put the squeeze on many of these businesses. And they're like, all right, you need to get these people back to work because we need these people spending money in our city for all of these vendors. We got 20%, 30% unemployment in the city. These people will eat them, will eat each other alive if this continues too long. And we can't keep printing money. We can't keep printing this fiat currency into oblivion because we will see the greatest collapse in all of history. And so they're pushing for all these people to come back and they're like, you don't want to come back? We're going to cut your salary, right? For all those people that live outside of the five boroughs, right? Because it goes on to say that if you lived in Connecticut, as you're going to take for those for those who lived in Stanford, Connecticut, for example, would see their salaries slashed by 15% for those who for those who continue working from home. It goes on to say that those who live within the five boroughs, why is this stupid thing here? This is by contrast, Googlers who live within NYC's five boroughs and choose to work from home permanently would not see their pay slash. Why? Because they live within the city limits and they know that the city will still benefit from their salaries because they'll spend money with the vendors, they'll go out to eat, etc. And the city will benefit. There's no point in... Uh, cutting those people's salaries it's the people who live outside that are now benefiting from a business within our city that we need to draw some of that revenue back either that or we're going to cut your salary so they, they let you make the choice this is the screenshots showed five or ten percent difference beat for commuters living in the seattle boston and san francisco area so all these people that were like hey work from home why am i stuck here in this little studio apartment i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna get myself a you know a place on the lake and I'm going to go do the same job that they were having me do in a crowded city. And I'm going to go out there and now I got land and now I got a nice house and now I got a nice view. Instead, before I was stuck in this shithole of a city. And then these cities are now basically wastelands. And the government is like, when we can't function. We can't function like this. You need to bring all these people back to the cities. 
how they're going to do it via cuts. But this is what happens. This is the route that America is going. And the government is very fearful over what could happen. You've got a lot of people in the country who are socialists and the government can't keep on supporting all of these individuals. The country will collapse just like Greece collapsed. And so moving forward, that's why you see them doing all of this of money printing. They're trying to stem off a double dip, a double dip recession, because if the if the economy goes back into a recession and we experience a depression and the government tries to print money and try to print their way with next to zero with next to zero percent interest rates with all of these social programs and then they have to raise rates country will collapse and you will experience hyperinflation like has been seen in places like Venezuela and this is where we're at